Hi there. Today, I'm going to share with you a section of my signature course that's called Blog School 101. This section is all about creating a professional logo from scratch, which is so important when you have a new blog. Most people think that you need to hire a graphic designer to make you a logo, but that's really not true at all, especially when you're first getting started. I'm going to show you how I create all of my logos. But before we get started, make sure you grab the free branding guide for this episode. You can get it at introvertsguidetofreedom.com. There is a link for it in the show notes. Hi there. In this video, we're talking about branding your blog. So the first thing that I want to talk about is consistency in your blog. That's what branding is. It's showing people helping them to have the same experience every single time they come into contact with you. And how you do that is through having consistency throughout your, your brand, not just your blog, but your social media, the videos that you do, anything that you're putting out there, your website, all of it has consistency. So you do that by using the same fonts, you do it by using the same colors, and then you do it by using your logo consistently as well. So branding is important because it's going to help people identify you. They're going, they're looking through tons and tons of social media all the time. How do they know what belongs to you? They're looking at different websites. Maybe there are 12 people named Sarah who talk about marketing. There's probably a lot more. There's probably more like 12,000. How do they know which one is me? How do you know? You know that based on my logo and maybe my logo isn't on every single thing but you see that same color of purple that I use everywhere. And as soon as you see that, you go, oh, I know that's associated with that Sarah that I like. So I'm gonna go check that out and see if it's her. Um, it also helps your audience get to know you, right? So there's a special tone in each one of the different fonts that you see. Um, it can be something that's fun and playful, or it can be something that's professional, or it can be something really clean and modern. It depends on which font that you pick, but it will help your audience get to know you. Um, it'll also help you attract the right kind of audience. So if you're using colors that are girly, like my colors, they're kind of girly. I use purple, I use pink in some of my colors. Um, that's really pretty girly. And that says to me and to the people who are looking at my content that I cater to women. If you're, using some a bright color like a black and a gold that might communicate something more like prestige and wealth um, there's a lot of there's a huge science behind the meaning of different colors but a lot of it just comes up with how you're using it and how you're combining the colors together i know this sounds kind of complicated i promise you it's not i'm going to show you some really really easy ways to figure all of this out and to do it really quickly. Having the right branding is gonna answer a lot of questions for you, right? So when you go to make your website, if you haven't already, and when you go to make graphics for your Instagram or for slides that you're gonna share, a lot of questions are gonna come up. Like what font should I use? And what color should the graphics be? And what color should my logo be? A lot of these questions where if you don't already have that figured out, you're going to have to stop and go, oh, what should this be? And you're going to end up with like 12 different colors for everything. And you might end up with 12 different fonts on one page. And I really don't want that for you. Trust me. It's very confusing and overwhelming. So we're going to answer all these questions right now. So one of the first questions that I want you to answer is how do you want your audience to feel? Branding is going to give your audience a feeling when they see you. Um, in the previous video, we talked about Apple products and how all of their designs are very clean and modern and straightforward. So that gives you a feeling, right? The whole way that Apple brands their products gives you a feeling. It's not just about using an iPhone. It's about a state of being. It's about a certain kind of person, right? That's what you're looking for. Not their specific feeling, but you're looking for a feeling. You want your branding to invoke a feeling. And you have to decide what that is. 
do you want the feeling to be empowering? Do you want it to be friendly? Do you want it to be carefree? Do you want it to be um, something that's more open or and accepting? That's something that you have to think about. And I really encourage you to go back to your description of your ideal customer and also go back to your purpose. When we talked about your one word, that's gonna answer a lot of those questions for you. So I wanna give you some examples of some different fonts. The top font, the one that says modern, that's one that I use quite a bit. So it's very clean and pretty skinny and it really just gives you a modern feel. It's a very common font that you see used a lot these days. The second one is a handwritten font. And to me, it seemed really friendly. The third one is one that I use in my new logo. Uh, to me, it's very trendy. You see it a lot on Pinterest. You see it a lot more now than what you used to. You have to be careful with some of these because they're kind of hard to read. So when you're picking a font, especially for your logo, make sure that it's readable. And this one is borderline unreadable. It really just depends. There are two different versions of that one. Um, I picked the one that was most readable for my logo. Um, the next one is another one that's, that's handwritten. And to me, it looked really fun. And then the last one is very professional. This font is actually what they use in books that get printed. Um, so it's very professional. Another term that you're going to hear is serif and sans serif. So this font on the bottom is serif because it has these little, um, I don't know what you call them, little wings, I guess. Um, it has these extra lines on it, right? The top one that's modern is sans serif. So it doesn't have those on it. Now, if you look at the top font, the one that says font on the very top of the page in purple, that one is also serif because it has that extra, those extra lines on it. But that's another one of the fonts that I picked that I feel like is more playful, which is why I picked it. So I really encourage you to pick two different fonts and stick with just two. Any more than two is going to put you in a world of hurt. So I would encourage you to pick one that's fun and then also one that's more modern or classic and that's really easy to read. So if you look at my logo, you'll see that I used the font that's fun that I spoke about and then I used one that's very easy to read and the bot at the bottom. The reason that I have two, you don't even need to have two, you can just use one if you want to, which might be best to start with just one. But the reason that I have two is because I am trying to phase out the INFJ woman brand and trying to go back to using my name. So that's why I have included two. Um, but you can really just use one. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is colors. And I wanna ask you again, how do you want your audience to feel? Because certain colors, invoke certain feelings. Um, like I said with mine, mine are kind of girly colors. Maybe you want something that is healthy, right? So colors, green colors invoke healthy feelings. They also invoke feelings of money. Um, blue colors are usually more calming and yellow and red colors are more exciting. There's a whole science into colors. You can get into it if you want to, or I'll show you how I picked my colors. I started with what was my favorite color, and my favorite color is purple. So you think, okay, I have a color, it's purple, but what shade of purple? Because there are like a million different shades of purple. So I'm gonna show you right now exactly how I picked it. I have a board on Pinterest. This is my Pinterest page. I have a board here that's called pick a color for your brand. That's this. This is exactly how I found my color. You'll see all different kinds of colors here. This one is very close to my color. It's not that one. I don't know that I have my specific color on here, but I know that it's, I know that it's a magnolia color. 
I absolutely love Joanna Gaines. So you'll notice that all of my colors tend towards Magnolia Home paint colors because I love those colors. Um, so a lot of the stuff that I've pinned comes from Magnolia Homes by Joanna Gaines. But then there's some other stuff below that as well. As well. If you just go to Pinterest on the home page and you type in colors on the search bar, you'll see a lot of these type of things come up where they have a whole palette of colors together for you. So I tell you to pick three colors. You need a primary color that you're going to use the most, and then you need two secondary colors, which are complementary colors. Using Pinterest is a great way to pick those colors where they all fit together. You don't have to worry about the science of colors. You don't have to look at a color wheel or you know, ask somebody who's a professional graphic designer to pick complementary colors. You don't have to do that. All you need is three colors that look good together. And like I said, this is a great way you can pick like, if you like blue, you could pick this darker or the lighter shade of blue. Um, a great complementary color is the green, and then you can use the purple as well. Three colors done for you right there. Let me see if I can find another one. So I love these colors too. Um, you have, you have like a, a brownish gray color and a purple or a green, and then you could use that purple or the pink. I don't even know what the specific colors are. I'm not that technical. Um, I'm more practical. I want something done and I want it done fast. So when I go looking for colors, this is what I look for. I love this color palette too. You're probably gonna see me use it somewhere. I don't know where, but I really like it. So let's take this color palette, right? You say, okay, this is the colors that I love. I'm gonna use this for my blog, but I don't know what those colors are. So how do I find those colors? It's very, very simple. So you click on these three buttons here and you go download image. And we go over here and we have this image here, right? And then you go over here to Adobe Spark. If you don't use this yet, you should. Um, you can use it for free. So you go up here to create a new post. It doesn't matter what size it is. We're not concerned about sizes right now. Um, you go over here to image on the right, upload image. Mine is gonna be in downloads. And I have to find it because all of my files are very unorganized. So you pull this in. And then we're gonna add some text because we need something to change the color of. So this is our new logo. Whoops. And I'm just gonna take the background off of that shape real quick. Okay, so I have my new logo, right? Maybe this is your name because I really encourage you to use your name. But you go over here to color and where it says current color, you see it has these little lines and when you hover over it, it says change color. So you click on that and then you click on this little eyedropper here and it will change your mouse to pick these colors for you. So all you have to do is go up here and click on this color. Now you have the color. And it's also giving you down here, it's giving you the hex number. Now hex is a technical term for web colors. So all you have to do is take that number and you copy it and you come over to Google and you say hex to RBG. RBG is another um, way to find a color. It's another type of color number. So you go hex to RBG, you paste in your hex code and you convert. There's the color. So uh, RBG stands for red, green, and blue. With those numbers, you can find that color in anything. With a hex color code and with an RBG color code, anybody can translate it. Really all you need is hex, especially if you're using everything in um, Adobe Spark. What you can do, you found the color, it will save your brand colors for you. I think that this is a premium feature, so you may have to pay for it, but it's only like $10 a month. It's like $9.99 a month. And I use it so much, my whole life lives here. 
between this and Google Drive, I don't think I could operate my business without either one of them. Um, but because you have that, you can save it here as a brand color. So you don't have to go back and look for it. You can just find it right there. Um, like these other colors that I have. See, all you have to do is click on them and it changes to them. Um, it's a really, really handy feature. So you can save the green that way. And then you can save the lighter green color that way. And then the lighter peach color, because we need all the colors, right? And you can always go back and delete these later um, if you don't, if you don't want to keep them. But that's that. That's that's a really easy and simple way. Um, if if you don't have, if you don't want to pay for it, I completely understand that. You can always just save these hex colors somewhere so you have them handy. Um, I love to use Google Keep. You can see I have tons of notes in Google Keep. That's just kind of where I do all of my brain dumps. Um, so you can use those and just copy and paste, copy and paste them when you need a different one. Okay, so I want to make sure that you download the brand worksheet that goes along with this video. You'll find it right above this video. Um, I want, there's a whole list of fonts on there. I encourage you to pick out a couple of those fonts. They're all very common fonts that you can find on Google. Most of them should be available on Microsoft as well. Um, you can also just go to your computer and scroll through the fonts that come up either on Microsoft Word, or you can open up a Google Doc and just scroll through the fonts and see which one that you like. I also encourage you to pick one primary color and two secondary colors for your brand. And then we're gonna design your logo. You're not gonna hire a graphic designer. You're not gonna make it complicated. It's gonna be super simple. In a couple of minutes, it's gonna be done. So use the font or fonts that you chose. Don't use more than two. Don't ever use more than two. Don't ever use more than two on one page. That's anything more than two makes you look unprofessional. Use the color, the primary color that you picked and possibly one other color. Again, don't use more than two. And you can design your logo very easily in Adobe Spark, or if you're more comfortable with Canva, you can use Canva as well. Make sure you grab the free branding guide for this episode. You can get it at introvertsguidetofreedom.com slash four. There's a link for it in the show notes. And we will see you next week.